often the one man on the WWE roster who lacked that title reign. Christian seemed to be the most ready. I mean, others like Jack Swagger won it, yet they didn't have a single attribute over Captain Charisma. Of course, youth and size come to mind, which is very, very, very important in the eyes of others. But in every other area, Christian has it. Size certainly wasn't the problem because guys like The Miz and CM Punk became champions, and maybe it came down to those in the back. I mean, we've heard the rumors and Bruce Prichard even went on something to wrestle and talked about how unenthusiastic McMahon was whenever they discussed Christian after talking about Edge. They thought he would renew in 2005, but then he was like, watch this, and went to TNA. Christian was provided the platform and prospered. He was his own man, and that's not saying he wasn't in WWE, but a mention of Christian always leads to Edge. He had an amazing three years with the company and certainly increased his stock. And by the time he returned to WWE, he was much better, but even then, he was relegated to ECW after a storyline of his was leaked. Obviously, they could have done more, but Christian once again proved his worth in leading that, no offense, dry-ass brand. Still though, he had to wait it out. On the other side of the WWE roster, Randy Orton was at the very top. His character work really stood out in 2009-10 and led to a huge face run on Raw. Orton was Mr. Give No Fucks. It didn't matter if you were in a high position, RK a woman, hell RKO them like nothing, and his unstable side was often a heavy topic in every one of his storylines including this one. With 2011, WWE was the very same initially. It kicked up during WrestleMania season and all that momentum and twists eventually led to a whole lot of new faces in the main event scene and one of those twists was very heartbreaking. Edge was forced to retire and relinquish his World Heavyweight Championship. It was terrible for him and SmackDown. For SmackDown, they liked somebody to carry them, and Edge for a couple of years was carrying SmackDown like LeBron carried the 2007 Cavaliers. Every time something went wrong, Edge was called in. And it's not like SmackDown didn't have the star power, but Edge was Mr. Reliable. Rey Mysterio, he was a big face and all that, but he was getting injured. Undertaker wasn't around for that long, Batista left, and Edge was the only guy remaining. Whether it was to hold the title and make a babyface look good, or become the babyface himself, Edge was that guy. He was a main event utility player and his value was ridiculous, so him being gone was gonna be felt. Initially, Edge was supposed to face Alberto Del Rio at Extreme Rules for the title, and this became a match between Christian and Del Rio. Regardless of what was gonna happen, a new world champion was gonna be crowned. This turned into a ladder match, and it was really amazing when you look at what it took for Christian to get here. It might have been because Edge retired that he was in this position, but I don't think it matters in the history books. He was finally a world champion over Alberto Del Rio, the most pushed wrestler in the company at that time. Even though he lost, I should mention this, it's like Man City or PSG. We know they're gonna win that elusive Champions League eventually, and that's what happened with Del Rio four months later. For Christian, probably the most iconic moment in his career. There's those guys whose moment of holding the title for the first time is in its own way more special compared to others. Guys such as Eddie Guerrero, Christian himself, Kofi Kingston, all these men seem destined to end their careers without holding the coveted gold, yet here they stood as champions. On the May 6, 2011 episode of SmackDown, Christian kicked off the show as the World Heavyweight Champion. The man couldn't contain a smile and he said that he waited 17 years to do this. And he raised the title. His dreams of winning the title pale in comparison to it actually happening and the man was in tears after he said that Edge told him to enjoy this moment. He thanked him and the fans as well and before he could continue, Mark Henry interrupted. He congratulated him and claimed to cheer for him. Why? Because he wanted to be the first to take the title away. Christian made fun of him for being fat and Henry told him that Edge isn't here to protect him anymore. And then the great Kali came out. He showed respect to Captain Charisma and wanted a title match as a former world champion unlike Henry. And the champion was weirded out by these two and to top it all off, Randy Orton was here. Henry was raging in the ring and knew that his title shot wasn't going to come to fruition. I mean Randy Orton is in the ring. Orton wanted the match as well and so Teddy Long tried to fix the situation. He asked the fans and Henry and Kali were screwed. And it was official, Christian will defend the World Heavyweight Championship against Randy Orton, and the match was tonight. Man, SmackDown knew what they were doing in 2011, except for those stupid ass replays. Now, even though the fans were happy, Todd Grisham felt otherwise asking Teddy, isn't it unfair for Christian to defend the title so soon? Teddy talked about how Orton competed on that same night and how it's about satisfying the fans. The question was a whole topic on commentary and it was heavily emphasized, but about this one, nice. Orton's methodical pace provided quite the challenge for Christian, and it also didn't help that he was damaged from Sunday. Nonetheless, he found an opening, and these two showed great potential in their first outing here. Orton had the edge throughout the match because of his form and, of course, experience. Christian was desperate to keep the title when they got to the final third, the final part of the match. The crowd was all in. Several quick counters. RKO, nope. Kill switch, nope. Then Christian bounced off the ropes, and Orton caught him with a super clutch RKO that destroyed the commentary team. They win insane, as did the crowd. One, two, three new champion. While the fans were proud of Orton, the focus was more on Christian losing the title after 5 days. Tragic. Good match, but it's almost sad watching the ending as cool as it was. Even some of the fans felt it. This man worked his entire career to reach the pinnacle of WWE, but in 2 days, it's gone. He didn't even have a successful title match in this run. Now, the biggest question to come out of this is why? Well, as The Rock said here, because. But in all seriousness, Edge leaving put a huge 
dense in SmackDown's main event scene. Christian wasn't at his level, whereas Orin was. Do I think this should have happened? No, no. But I guess they didn't trust him to lead this show. I mean, when you look at the face of SmackDown, was Christian really going to be there? No. Otherwise, he would have won the title so long ago. Now, what did Christian have to say about the loss? In an interview with Between the Ropes in May of 2011, Christian said, Obviously, it was underwhelming, surprising, and flattering to an extent. It's the age that we live in now with the internet and with spoilers and people like that. The show hasn't even aired yet, and people are giving opinions and these sort of things. You have to take it with a grain of salt, and the most important thing is that Randy Orton and I put on an amazing match for the fans. Now, I didn't know this at the time. All I did as a kid was randomly go to YouTube and watch some random wrestling stuff. But the fans were fuming on Twitter. They were cursing out Randy Orton for taking the title, cursing Vince for allowing it to happen, and complained about Christian having a two-day title reign. It's somewhat messed up, you know, but it happened. The following week on SmackDown, Christian addressed his title loss. He agreed with Teddy Long's decision to make the match, damn liar, and despite the loss, he felt confident of his chances at Over the Limit and said that 100% prepared Christian can beat Randy Orton. All of a sudden, Sheamus interrupted and similar to Christian, he agreed with Teddy Long giving the fans what they want. So he challenged Christian to a match. Mark Henry interrupted. He said that speaking for the fans and himself, they enjoyed seeing him lose the title. However, Sheamus shouldn't be the one that challenges him. Why? Because he's the red-headed stepchild that speaks funny. They ended up agreeing on something and that was to attack Christian, so Randy Orton made the save. As a result of this, Teddy Long did the Teddy Long special and booked the tag team match. Now Orton wasn't trying to be no good guy saving Christian, it was to ensure that he was at 100% when he loses at Over the Limit. Both men didn't let up at the end of the night and it was a case of keep your enemies closer. Orton once again saved Christian from an attack and Captain Charisma didn't feel as thankful as last time. He said that he wasn't mad at Orton taking the title away after 17 years and hoped that he shared the same feeling at Over the Limit. At the end of the night, Christian was in the same situation as Orton, but unlike him, it took a bit longer to make the safe. Orton gets pissed over something, but they managed to drop the heels. The champion with an RKO and the splits? Man had to be hanging out with Riddle at this point. It's just so out of place. Was he on something here? Like, Randy Orton doing the splits? What the hell? Now, Todd Grisham still pressed Christian on the whole 17-year thing, and once again, he said that he wasn't mad. He assured him that he's winning the title tonight, and Randy knows it. Randy told him that there's no feel-good story. The Seattle faithful, along with wrestling fans in general, didn't predict what would come. So up to this point, Christian worked 17 years. From the Brood, to Edge and Christian, to TNA, and finally, he climbed to the top of the ladder. It was an amazing story, but from out of nowhere, the title's gone. Randy Orton took it from him, yet he felt that need to tell everyone that he wasn't mad. This one was high key one of the best matches from 2011. It had the intangibles of that hot crowd, two tremendous wrestlers, the chemistry, everything. These two showed great athleticism and went back and forth early on. It was just textbook wrestling, and on paper, there's nothing special about it. They're not bleeding, busting out some ridiculous moves. It was just back and forth action at its best. Both men were in form, they were perfect in attempting the moves, and it clicked. Christian had an actual chance of winning it and it came down to a counter you couldn't see coming. It's like that punch or kick that's unstoppable in MMA, that shot on goal that the keeper can't save, as Orin catches him with an RKO. One, two, three. A spectacular match between two world-class wrestlers, and you have to watch it to truly appreciate the greatness of this feud. There's a reason why others still talk about this feud, even though Christian was losing all the time. After that match, Christian seemed upset, but still managed to shake Orin's hand. Later that week on SmackDown, the world champion was set to talk about Over the Limit when... You guessed it, Christian came out. He thanked and congratulated Orton for Sunday and told him that he deserved to be the champion. Orton knew something was coming out of this and, as expected, a former champion said that the match could have gone either way. He knew that he could beat Orton and challenged him once again, so Sheamus came out and called him an addict. He told him to wait 17 more years and called him a two-time loser. Unlike him, he's a two-time WWE champion. Mark Henry follows up and told Christian not to miss the tea time with Edge on the golf course. Man, is this Comedy Central? They're just roasting Christian for no reason. He wanted a title shot as well. Teddy Long came out and booked the triple threat match with the winner facing Randy Orton. Similar to his last title shots, he came short as Sheamus won the right to challenge the Apex Predator. Christian was very upset with what had gone down and pulled a Dolph Ziggler saying it should have been him. He complained about how Orton was in his way during the match and he had it won. He wanted one more chance, but Teddy Long thought otherwise. The man was so desperate for the rematch and was willing to have a triple threat match, and he was using Teddy's words to try and get him to make the match, but instead, he made Captain Charisma the special guest referee. Now, because Christian hated Sheamus, he cost him the match, then from out of nowhere, he struck the champion. The losses were annoying him, it got to the point where he's like, screw it. Hell, he even took it a step further and took the title with him. In light of this, he decided to address everyone on the following episode of SmackDown. Christian felt that the fans saw his perspective and how he's been screwed over recently, and even then he thought that some of them didn't get it. So he turned on them and said that he didn't want to talk to them. 
Instead, he wanted to talk to Michael Cole. He told him that he wanted one more match for the World Heavyweight Championship. He deserved it. Cole obviously agreed, and Christian didn't understand how his fans that were so angry when he lost the title were now the same people who were furious with him. He felt that the fans had no right to ruin something he was working for for 17 years, and about Randy Orton, he's never been disrespected by somebody like him. He also added that if he was a man, then he wouldn't have accepted the match knowing what he went through and extreme rules. He then asked Cole to ask the fans if he deserved to be the World Heavyweight Champion, and they were as expected in Christian's eyes, clueless, and said that he will be World Champion again. Randy Orton, meanwhile, wanted Christian to come out and say what he wants to say. All he wanted was one more match. Christian teased coming out to the ring but decided to ask again for a title shot. Orton accepted and said that the results will remain the same. He left at least that's what it looked like because later that night Christian returned and cost Orton his match against Sheamus. Orton suffered a concussion as a result of this and Christian gloated about it. He said that this could be used as an excuse despite the fact that he, Christian, is better than him. And after he loses, maybe he'll give him a rematch five days later. Sheamus wanted everyone to not overlook him and this led to Teddy Long booking a match between the two. If Sheamus wins, it's a triple threat match. This didn't go Sheamus' way but it provided Christian a sign of what's to come at capital punishment. About their match, it was good but fails to stand out compared to others. Christian was dominant compared to last time with Orin working from under. The champion was very aggressive on offense initially before slowly finding himself in control. Several impressive counters, but once again Orin catches Christian to retain the title. Good, just not on the level of over the limit or any of their other matches. However, despite losing the match, Christian complained to the referee about his foot being under the rope. So Orin added insults, injury blasting him with a title. In light of this, Teddy Long addressed the events of Sunday. He admitted that this was a problem, you know, the referee made a mistake, and apologized to the fans. Christian showed frustration, complaining about this, saying he was screwed on one more shot. Teddy was like, it depends on if you earn the shot, and so he whined about how the referee made the mistake, not him. And Teddy Long roasted him, saying he's the one who lost. And then said that Christian's match was against Kane. This turned into a tag team match, which Christian ended up winning with the help of Mark Henry. And this in itself ended up screwing him over. Why? Because Teddy Long gave Mark Henry an opportunity to challenge Randy Orton. And that's if he beats the champion. Since Henry lost, Christian got the title shot. Later that night, it was time for the contract signing. And Christian brought out his contract and brought up a bunch of stipulations. He said that he knew he could beat Orton as he did it on Raw two weeks earlier. He told him that nobody could save him anymore and have money in the bank. He's going to prove that Orin can't beat him. The champion acknowledged that he respected Christian and enjoyed facing him in title matches, but he's beaten him three times and now he's complaining about one more match. All this was starting to piss him off and Orin mentioned his past anger problems teasing something. However, Orin told Christian that a lawyer isn't going to help him win the title. He's going to beat him. Orin signs, but then Sheamus comes in and attacks both men. Now, at this point, it was obvious that the match itself, the Money in the Bank title match, was literally against Orin, yet he didn't give a damn. All he was focused on was Sheamus, and as expected, Christian interfered, but by the end of all this, it was the apex predator who stood tall. On the final SmackDown before Money in the Bank, Randy Orton gave his final thoughts ahead of Sunday. He wasn't worried over the DQ rules and said that there's more than one way to win. He saw it as a cheap way for Christian to win the title and suddenly he appeared on the Titan Tron and said that his lawyers put that in his contract. He knows he could beat Orton without those stipulations. Mean the nice guy that he was, Christian brought out a framed picture of the night he blasted Orton with the title. The Apex Predator thought this was pathetic so Christian said that his family was. He made Orton's father look like a jobber and basically called him a low level Hall of Famer. He also said that the only reason he's in there is because upper management wanted to keep his son, Rand Yorn, happy. Orin wanted him to come down to the ring, but Christian said that it will come down on Sunday to beat him and tell the world how pathetic of a champion he was. Orin saw Christian as a pathetic excuse of a man, and after Sunday, he'll be known as a pathetic bitchy man whose only claim to fame is from his best friend who helped him win a title for only five days. Man, Christian's getting roasted all the time, so what did he decide to do? Well, he decided to vandalize his bus. Meanwhile, Orin was set to face Kane. He's all busy when his Money in the Bank opponent decided to come out. Orton was well aware of the bus incident and Captain Charisma knew there was a way to increase his opponent's anger and that's exactly what he did even then all he did was piss off a man who was not known to act right. About Money in the Bank, it was definitely better than Capital Punishment. There was more heat and excitement with this one. Christian was desperate to set off Randy Orton and immediately after watching, you knew it was going to surpass the previous match. Captain Charisma was mostly in control and had the DQ in his back pocket. Once again, Christian had the RKO scouted similar to the other two matches, and this time around, he finally hit the kill switch, but Orin kicked out. It seemed like Christian's best shot as Orin was in form, and he was all over Captain Charisma, so he spat in his face, and the champion lost his temper. He's delivering strikes all over him, and then he low-blowed Christian, and the referee rang the bell. Man gets kicked in the balls, wins the title. 
the Apex Predator was not in the right state of mind at this point. His temper got the best of him and he RKO'd Christian through the announce table. As for the results of the match, Christian won the title with a DQ. It kind of showed that he was inferior to Randy Orton, that he was in his league. You know, the title win was cheap and it wasn't benefiting of holding the title because he did actually win it. On the other side, it really fit Christian's new character who was so desperate to win the title that he would stoop low to become champion. A win that's cheaper than Julius from Everybody Hates Chris. Later that week on SmackDown, Randy Orton sat in the middle of the ring. He was gonna sit there until he resolved his business with Christian. And there he was, the new world heavyweight champion. Christian felt the unfinished business is Orton's anger issues, not a rematch. He also didn't want him to complain about using his superior intellect to win the title. All Orton did was break the rules knowing what was to come, and he was still pissed. Christian claimed that he didn't mean to spit in his face and he saw this as justice as he's tried to fight incompetence. Teddy Long, those that tried protecting Orton and now he's back on top despite all this. And he was still not talking to the fans. Randy Orton wanted his rematch for tonight and the new champion told him to go to the back of the line. He was about to take a beating but Teddy Long came out and reminded Orton of his match with Kane. Even then he went after the new champion. With Triple H as the new COO of WWE, he was essentially the most powerful guy in the company. Here, he was going to speak about the World Heavyweight Championship when Christian interrupted. He complained about Teddy Long and mentioned how he was forced to bring Lars into the world title situation and the reason why he came here was to ask what Triple H is going to do about it. The game didn't like whatever Vince used to do and told Christian that they didn't need a meeting to discuss anything. He told him straight up that Randy Orton is going to get his title shot at SummerSlam and since Christian complains about officiating it's going to be a no holds barred match as expected he complained but then R-Truth came out don't want me he complains about a conspiracy as well and got booked in a match against Randy Orton. And that main event showed once again that the world champion is screwed. Orton showed great confidence ahead of SummerSlam saying Christian's never beaten him. And he was set to face off once again in a tag team match later that night. This one went Christian's way as he pinned the Apex Predator showing that it's possible. Now Triple H was very effortless when it comes to Christian's demands. He didn't give a damn. So Christian announced that he's going to sue the WWE. Why? Because he felt that Randy Orton competing against him in a no holds barred match is providing him an unsafe working environment. Triple H said that the match is still on and he told Captain Charisma he has to make good on his contract otherwise he's in breach. And he takes the title away from him as a result of that. Christian was holding on to it like Triple H used to in 2003 and decided to whine. Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. Why are you helping Randy Orton who attacked your family? Triple H put it simply. The fans and himself used to respect Christian. In order for them to respect him again, he should stop whining and compete against Randy Orton to earn that respect. At this point, he realized this is the only way, and he said it straight up. I'm gonna beat Randy Orton on Sunday. Both men had some momentum behind them, even Christian who lost his match by count out. Why? Because he let Randy Orton know that he couldn't wait for their match. He received the call, and it's gonna change everything, and to put it simply, he had the best thing going. Now, this news was kept tight. Christian seemed extremely confident of his insurance policy, and he called Orton an overproduced, overrated flop, similar to Cowboys and Aliens. Now, about this one superb, one of my favorite SummerSlam matches of all time. Randy Orton, a man at times driven by anger in pursuit of the title, he never lost by pinfall or submission. Christian, a desperate champion who perceived everything going against him. Teddy Long, the referees, and of course, the status of Randy Orton as a top guy in WWE. Christian was so excited about the announcement, he didn't waste time. He brought out Edge. These two shared a moment, and unfortunately for Christian, this was not the homecoming that he expected. For one, Edge said that despite retiring, he was proud to open the door for his best friend. He was deserving of the title, and it was unfair for him to have defended the title five days later, but then he complained the next week, and the next week. But then he wins the title, by disqualification. Even Edge was shocked because this man was a devil, even he never won the title by DQ. Hell, he even said that he used to do crazy things with style, unlike Christian who was boring. And despite being his best friend, to the day he dies, he didn't understand how Christian became a whining, moaning little bitch. And with that, the momentum swung to Orin's side. This match easily stands out because it was entirely different compared to others. Christian had way more offense compared to a bunch of their matches, and the heat for this one from the crowd and of course the action, it was befitting as the final match in the feud. Christian especially was so damn close to retaining at several moments. The kill switch, the concerto attempt that he screwed up by wasting too much time. He attacked Orin with a kendo stick, but messed up with the same sunset flip that got him to this very point, and Orin hit the RKO. One, two... Three. Tremendous match, it showed the variety these two had in the feud. Christian could work as a heel or a face in normal or intense situations, and if the feud were to end here, I think many would be satisfied, but wait, there's more. Because Christian was a whiny baby, he found a way to get one more match. Bret Hart embarrassed him here, and so Captain Charisma threatened legal action, claiming no rest to receive a title shot before him. The hitman who was GM for one night confirmed that Christian gets his rematch for the title on SmackDown. In an effort to shut him up, Bret Hart booked the steal 
cage match. The odds were against him, yet Christian by Tuesday was ready. He thought everyone was against him and called himself a resilient person. He fought for himself and at this point, he didn't need the title to validate his career, he just wanted it. With regards to the match, Christian was a cowardly heel looking for an easy way out. His cheap efforts eventually led to him taking control, but every time Orrin would catch him. The champion was about putting work and as Booker T used to say at the time, you gotta love it. They just had the talent to put on a good match effortlessly. So many unbelievable moments where the match could have ended, and of course the callbacks were here. Christian actually used some of them to his advantage. Orin finds momentum, and Christian's like, I'm out. So Orin RKO's him from the top. One, two, three. Once again, amazing match. This one really put up a fight compared to SummerSlam and their Over the Limit match. It's really, really a hidden gem. It's one of the best SmackDown matches from the tens easily. It was a great way to end the feud, and they didn't need this match, but it happened, and it was great. All right, so that's the feud. Honestly, I love it. Of course, we have to acknowledge that Christian lost a lot of matches. You know, Randy Orton was literally better than him. But at the same time, it's nice seeing him in the main event. I really liked when he turned heel and tried pissing off Orton to the point where he won the title by disqualification. Like, how many guys won the title by DQ? It didn't make him inferior in a way and all that, but still, it really fit his new character. The matches are must-watch, and this easily would be the best feud of 2011. But there's something else out there that was just a little bit better. My favorite match from here is probably SummerSlam. I really love the way Christian was whining and moaning. And then he gets Edge out here thinking he has a chance. Then Edge is like, I'm out. And so he's left to deal with an angry Apex Predator. It was nice. All right. What would you guys think of the Randy Orton and Christian feud? Please comment down below. And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit the kill switch on the like button. And perhaps the RKO on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.